determined to show they could mix it with the heavyweights of the Premiership. This incident in the first half certainly proved they had the stomach for the fight. A handbag session involving almost every player on the pitch before referee Stephen Lodge eventually restored order. But the Swansea players were far from mere hammer throwers. Jason Smith, whose tackle on Ian Wright sparked the mass brawl, popped up at the other end to head the Welsh club into a deserved lead just after the hour. The last 10 minutes, that's all you're thinking is what you're going to do if we hold on here. But uh, it um, shot from dicks and we just never expected it and it all fell apart. Swansea goalkeeper Roger Freestone had enjoyed an outstanding afternoon, but his error, four minutes from time, allowed Dix to salvage the tie and left John Holland's players devastated. They felt they'd lost it. They, they were really disappointed, you know, and I said, well, you know, what are you disappointed? Because we had it. We had the, the game in the, you know, we had the game in our hands. Um, and, you know, it was, a, it was a very good drive. We hit it very well, but it came to a rucker players and, and Roger saw it very late. It's been for so long then uh, to concede a weak goal and that's four minutes does hurt but uh, we're looking forward to taking back to the vetch it'll be a tough game and uh, we're confident we can do it again on a grey day for the hammers the only ray of light was the long-awaited debut of west ham wonder kid joe cole who came on for the final 25 minutes yeah it was joe's first appearance today and he came on and i'm sure they was pleased with what they saw you know he's, uh, he's got good ability to say the least to say the least yeah <laughs> We'll no doubt see bags of coal in the future, but for these Swansea players, there's certainly no time like the... Careful if they'll ever get used to Scott Taylor's shocking early miss with the Ipswich defenders missing in action. And when that happens, you know it's not going to be your day. John McGreal's flashing header into his own net put the tin hat on it. Tranmere nil, Ipswich won. Two of the First Division's informed teams met at Valley Parade and it was Bradford, with five wins and a draw in their previous six games, who took the lead. That sweet 16 goals now for Lee Mills. Jamie Lawrence, on the other hand, was still waiting for his first. But this one was worth waiting for. And so was John McDermott's first of the season. Though it didn't stop Bradford from reaching round four. And nor did Andy O'Brien sending off late on the two yellow card offences. Final score at Valley Parade, Bradford City 2, Grimsby 1. Here's an object lesson, how not to play the offside trap. Robbie Keane almost missed the game through injury, but was never going to miss that. But, enter Scott Sellers. And after that from Sellers, a little wine from Wolves. But they gained revenge for Bolton, knocking them out six years ago. Michael Jilks cross, brilliantly converted by Keane to leave Wolves the happy wanderers. And last season's semi-finalists are off and running again. Bolton 1, Wolves 2. Huddersfield have appeared in five FA Cup finals, but you'd have been claiming the old age pension a few years if you can recall their only victory in 1922. They rode their luck at Loftus Road. The only goal from local boy Wayne Allison. That's a peach of a header no matter what way you look at it. QPR nil, Huddersfield 1. Barnsley were marginally the better team in this poor game at the county ground. Both Craig Hignett and Don Goodman took it out on the same post. Bobby Howe came close for Swindon, but they'll need a replay. Swindon nil, Barnsley nil. Berry haven't reached the fourth round in 13 years and they were blown away in the Manchester derby. Derek McInnes shaking the Christmas cobwebs out of the woodwork and angels have always been at the right place at this time of year. Brett Angel, no exception. They quickly struck again. Ian Moore's cross forcing the error from Chris Lachetti. The only luck he's got is half his surname. Moore's constant tormenting provided more reward. Colin Woodthorpe obliging in the centre 
very buried by three goals in the first 26 minutes. Very nil, Stockport three. There isn't a side in the country who need a prolonged cup run more than cash-strapped Oxford, and they were in charge from the moment Dean Windass brought his seasonal tally to a round dozen at Cresty Road. He's the one without the hat. The second just before the break was a real mess. Eight crew defenders inside the six-yard box. None of them picked up Matt Murphy. It was no consolation for crew, but easily the best goal of the game came from them. Oxford failed to clear a corner. Mark Rivers laid it back. And Seth Johnson's volley, simply irresistible. But it only served to rev up Oxford United. The deep corner not cleared by Jason Keaton, under pressure from Mark Watson. And Matt Murphy doubled his money for Oxford. Crew one, Oxford United three. We are far from finished semi-finalists and runaway division one leader Sunderland had been a shade rusty either side of Christmas and they knew they had to be at their most professional at Sinsel Bank especially when Martin Scott was taken away on a stretcher after just 11 minutes it was a blow but four later they seized the initiative Michael Gray with a buccaneering run from wing back Danny Dicchio the measured layoff and the finish came from recent evidence signing Gavin McCann his first for the club we all need a bit of luck sometime. But Sunderland ended the match a man light. Darren Williams, who'd run the show from midfield, shown a second yellow, but no one was complaining at the Stadium of Light, especially Peter Reid. Lincoln nil, Sunderland won. I thought we caught with Everton very, very well. Um, it was an aerial bombardment, but we got... Uh, good defenders and we've got Niall Quinn and Danny Ditchio who can come back and help us. I thought we had the better chance in the second half. Well, I didn't think. I know we did. West Brom have only won one FA Cup tie since 1993 and they fell to lower division opposition again at Dean Court. Eddie Howe put the cherries in round four for the first time in seven years. Bournemouth won, West Brom nil. They needed a replay with Hendon in round one, a penalty shootout against Wigan in the second. So even after Tony Garcia rattled the post, Notts County weren't in too much of a sweat at Bramall Lane. Mind you, when you fall behind to a goal of this quality, doubts are sure to creep in. Wayne Quinn with the pinpoint cross, Marcello the ripper of a header. The Blades still needed some insurance, and just before the break, Nicky Marker should have provided it. He didn't. And 20 into the restart, County made him pay. No need to ask who put the knife in. Gary Jones, his fourth of the competition already. Would there be a hero now? Well, it should have been Michael Twist, but it wasn't the net shaking, but the fans in the back row. Sheffield United won, Notts County won. Wrexham beat Scunthorpe two years ago and made the quarter-finals. And they're through to the fourth round after a seven-goal thriller at the race course. Scunny's Richard Logan put them on their way after wrong putting his own keeper. At the start of the second half, they made it two. Carl Connolly bulldozing his way through at the far post. Scunthorpe gave themselves hope three minutes later. Substitute Steve Howsham heading in off keeper Mark Cartwright's knees. But... They were 3-1 down almost as quickly. Martin Chalk and Connolly combining well. And Howsham's touch at that end, not nearly as effective as his header at the other. Connolly will never score a simpler goal. But then a scorching Scunthorpe fight back. John Eyre gave them an air of hope. Peter Ward's deflection all important. Before Paul Harsley equalised in breathtaking style. Pick that one out. Scunthorpe were dreaming of the replay or dreaming of something when Dave Brammer strolled through. Connolly on hand for an injury time winner. His hat trick, Wrexham safe passage. Wrexham four, Scunthorpe three. Bristol Rovers had blazed eight goals without reply in the first two rounds of the FA Cup, so there was no shortage of confidence when they rolled into Millmore. The only goal couldn't have come at a better time. Stefan Leone signed from Mets in the summer with his first for the club. Jason Roberts put him in. 
but it was hands on the back of the head time early in the second half. Andy Roscoe spurning the Merry Millers, best chance of the match. Rovers thought they'd made it safe when Michael Meeker stole in near the end, but boss Ian Holloway knew his boys were in the hat for Red Storm. They also took a battering on the pitch early on as Cardiff fluffed a hat full of chances. The non-leaguers, though, kept their nerve, and the hard-working Steve Thompson so nearly gave them a shock lead. But almost inevitably, it was former Cardiff striker Carl Dale who pounced after the break, following the corner. A dream return to Ninian Park for the 32-year-old who still lives in Wales. And it could have been 2-0 minutes later, David Piper's topo cleared off the line by Delaney. Cardiff regrouped and threw everything at Yeovil, then just when it seemed the conference side would hang on for the win, it was Kevin Nugent who snatched the equaliser. Yeah, I've got the last touch now. I wasn't quite sure actually, but um, Chris and Robert... Hay Avenue was Southport's mini Wembley for this match, and the potential for a cup fairy tale was there with Southport player manager Paul Futcher in the starting lineup at the age of 42. His side began nervously and almost let in Leighton Orient in the first few minutes but then they started to press. And a couple of efforts from set pieces cleared off the line. How different it might have been if the chances had been taken. This one, soon after the break, fell to Dave Gamble again. It was a crucial turning point when he hit it wide with the goal of his mercy. I thought we made a lot of chances in the first half. I had one that hit the bar and there was a couple of other little scrambles. After that, it was Orient's game. A disputed penalty on the hour when Horner bungled over Tony Richards with the second break to go Orient's way. Dean Smith rarely misses from the spot. He didn't this time. Kept plugging away and uh, we, we made one or two chances. You know, they rode the luck a little bit, but at the end of the day, you know, they could come here with a difficult game and uh, they'll see it as job done and, uh, you know, as, as far as everybody sees it tomorrow morning, they're in the last 32. The O's wrapped it up 11 minutes later with a simple goal as Southport tried to claw back. Carl Griffiths on the end of a swift move down the field. And despite the home side's gallant efforts right up to the final whistle, the Southport dream ended there. Check out the action in this one. Preston on the attack from the second division, looking for a huge upset. Oh, the weak shot there stopped by Alex Manninger. But they wouldn't stop this. Kurt Nogan in the 17th minute, in front and in the net. It was a great play by Jonathan Mack, and as they celebrate, even the mascot into the act, Preston North End with a 1-0 lead. Here we go again. David Ayers, corner kick. Nogan again with the head. A shocker. It is 2-0. Check it out again. Beautiful work by the second division club. Arsenal, though, would get back in it. Luis Boamorte in the 44th minute. That made it 2-1 as the Gunners got back in. Check out the work by Boa Morte. And then some action. Color it red. David Ayers trips up Mark Overmars and goodbye. Ayers, you're out. Take off. That happened in the 59th minute and then Emmanuel Petit on the free kick. Upper left corner. He's online at Netscape. And it's 2-2. Two to two. Arsenal still attacking. Petit. Luis Boramorte. Yes, the combination with Petit getting the goal in the 79th minute. That made it 3-2 Arsenal. And then Gunners closed it out. Luis Boamorte with the pass to Mark Overmars. He finds net. That happened in the 81st minute. It was 4-2 and Arsene Wenger, he can breathe easily. Arsenal comes back, scores four straight goals after being down 2-0. And they take the victory.